What's up, Pixel people? My name is Rob. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Pixel Press, the creators of Bloxels. And today we're talking with Ken Ehrman from PD Campus. We're going to be talking about professional development using Bloxels. And I'm going to dial him in right now on Zoom. All right. What's up, Ken? Hey, Rob. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Are you uh, working from uh, working from home? I am working from home. I'm in the office slash playroom right now. <laughs> I'm in the uh, the Bloxel Studio, which is actually uh, at home. <laughs> so yeah, uh, cool. yeah. So uh, how are things? How are things going for you? Staying busy? Yes, staying very busy. Uh, things are going well. Um, you know, at my school district, Penridge School District in. Bucks County, PA, right outside of Philadelphia, where we're distance learning. We have been since uh, mid-March. Uh, schools are permanently closed in Pennsylvania for the year. Wow. So that's definitely been an adjustment. Um, it's been a it's been a good experience. Um, you know, I'd much rather be with the kids in school, but it, on a personal note as well, I get to be home with my little ones. So sure. I'm enjoying the extra time of, of seeing them grow. Uh, so it's a catch 22, I guess. Ah, yeah, no, it's excellent. Um, I got some, uh, got some questions for you. You happy to, uh, have a chat? Absolutely. Well, let's, let's introduce you first of all. Um, your name is, uh, Ken Ehrman. So why don't you, uh, yep. tell us a little bit about, uh, who you are and uh, what you do? Sure. So, uh, as I said, I teach, I, I teach a STEM special, um, at the elementary level in Penridge school district. Uh, this is my first year in that position. I also serve as the, the gifted teacher for the building. Previously, I taught fifth grade for seven years, also in Penridge, um, just as a, a homeroom classroom teacher, um, you know, teaching all the subjects. I was very passionate about integrating STEM technology um, and really just overall creating a student-centered classroom where, um, you know, my, my motto was that the kids should be working way harder than I should be when they're in the room. And I did all my hard work when they weren't there. Um, you know, creating activities, finding new things for them to do. And it was always about how can I challenge them more and engage them in, in the content, um, but do it in a way that, that maybe connects with them a little bit more, has them think a little bit harder, uh, be, you know, more problem solvers. Um, so that was always my passion. So being in a position now where, you know, I'm in charge of teaching, you know, quote unquote STEM to uh, kids first through fifth grade, um, you know, my skill set is has just served me so much more in that position. And outside of my work with Penridge, I also work for a company called PD Campus, um, and we we teach graduate courses. Um, specializing in STEM and technology integration. Uh, we partner with school districts and run our classes on school district campuses and we're able to kind of fit in with their technology and STEM initiatives and, and just give teachers more professional development that are also pursuing uh, earning extra graduate credits, which is a big thing in Pennsylvania for teachers. And we also do uh, just professional development in general for school districts and we run events like STEM Camp EDU. So That's STEM awesome. Camp, STEM Camp EDU is a is a name that some people are actually more familiar with, and it's an event that we've created and run for uh, five years now. Um, we're taking a break this summer um, just <laughs> due to COVID and everything, but um, but yeah, so it's been a it's been a great experience that's helped me grow personally, um, you know, as well as all the teachers that we work with. I was really looking forward to uh, getting back up to Philly. Um, for STEM camp this year. So uh, yeah. we, uh, we, we've we done this a few different years and last year was my first year. So um, I was really looking forward to uh, to doing that this year. So it's kind of a bummer that we're in the situation we're in. But, you know, uh, most of the most of the cool travel that we get to do for education, uh, the cool conferences and seeing the old friends and familiar faces, um, not gonna be able to do that this year. So uh, 
We'll right. do it. We'll do it. We'll yeah. do it this way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we always love having you guys out. So it is a bummer, but just got to do what you got to do right now. Tell me a little bit about your uh, the graduate program that you do. Um, I always found that really interesting. That uh, I, I mean, partic- partially that you're that you're doing it with Bloxels, but just that you're doing it in general. Um, I'm kind of curious. Right. What is uh, you know? Give me the two minute. How does that work? What's the what's the what's the goal there, and how what was the impetus for that? Yeah, so our director Tom McGee started the company PD Campus about six or seven years ago. I've been on board for five years now, um, and he was a former teacher. He also worked for um, Apple Education, doing um, consulting around the country, and kind of found his niche and niche in professional development. And so, so we have courses that are, that are really growing right now in what we offer. Um, we do a lot on iPad and Google integration. Um, our STEM courses, we have courses on 3D printing in the classroom. Like you alluded to, we have a, a course called Creativity and Curriculum through video game design. And we talk a lot about Bloxels and just how to inspire more creativity in your classrooms. And so in Pennsylvania particularly, and I, I know there are other states like it, um, but for us, that's where we are right now. Um, the teachers need to earn more graduate credits to maintain their permanent certification, as well as that's how salaries are kind of constructed in Pennsylvania. The more credits you have, the more you're able to earn. And so it's a great way to empower and encourage teachers to learn more. And so our courses are focused around some sort of technology or STEM integration tool. But our courses are really about practicality, pedagogy, and how to impact your teaching style and ultimately the learning taking place in the classroom. So, you know, we empower the teachers to understand the tools. Um, Depending on the class, sometimes they get the tool with it. So, for example, an iPad course, they get a brand new iPad because they need it to be able to do the course. Same with the, the creativity course, they get a Block Souls kit because they, they need that stuff to be able to do it. Um, but it really empowers them and encourages them to just transform the way their classrooms operate. That's and excellent. all of our instructors like me are classroom teachers. And we're just out there and we're just creating opportunity for teachers to learn more. It's a very relaxed atmosphere. And you know everything that they do is to bring back to their classroom. And what I always remind our participants when they look at their projects that they have to do, I say, put the rubric aside. Number one criteria is you need to create something for your classroom, not for media instructor. That's the last thing that I want them to do. And yeah. so it's really just about creating an opportunity where teachers are able to take things back to their classroom because that time is so valuable that they're, that they're putting towards the course. That's really awesome. That's really cool that you guys are doing that. Um, And we're now we're now 100 percent online as well. Um, We were moving in that direction. Almost all of our courses are 100 percent online and and the rest will be by the fall. Um, So we're looking to expand, you know, well outside of Pennsylvania and just reach as many teachers as possible, because the, the most rewarding experience has been I've just had a volume of emails of teachers send, you know, sending me one saying, I am so happy I took your class because I'm surviving right now. Yeah. It, it empowered them to be able to survive this distance learning because they were so much more prepared to use technology with their positions. That's really cool. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a bummer that, uh, you know, being in the industry that we're in and, uh, and working where we are, um, that a lot of people were sideswiped by this. Um, so the fact that you're doing, you know, the, the good work of, uh, of getting people up to date and, um, getting them integrated with the tools and the processes is awesome. And I, uh, you know, I, I want to thank you. It's really great. Um, from a, a school year perspective where, you know, we're about to wrap up. Um, it's definitely going to be one to remember. Um, how have you handled the switch to virtual learning with your students? Um, you know, what's, uh, what's kind of worked for you? Um, any predictions for the future? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, not necessarily the pandemic, you know, specifically, but just what it's right. done, what it's done to us and, you know, what it's done for you and uh, how you've kind of navigated that. Right. It's um, it's definitely been a challenge. Uh, you know, I felt a little bit more prepared just because of my comfort level and experience with using technology. Um, very particularly for my position, I'm, I'm technically a special teacher. 
So, you know, I'm only giving students limited amount of work each week where their homeroom teacher is really providing more of the uh, bulk of the workload. Um, but it, it, it gave me a chance to kind of reflect on, you know, what if I was still in fifth grade, which I was a year ago. Um, and I, I think I would have been prepared, not because my students use technology a lot, um, because I, I really focused on establishing a culture of learning in the room where students were forced to work independently and to really manage themselves. And I think that's one of the biggest struggles right now. And it's, it's not a knock on any teacher by any means or any parent, because you know, what, what the kids, everybody's struggling right now, just with how do we give them time? How do I help my own children while I'm trying to work at home? Um, you know, teachers trying to teach while working at home um, and, you know, managing their own. So it's just, everybody's just overwhelmed. Um, and so it's definitely been a, a steep learning curve. Um, you know, thinking long term, I think this will have a huge positive benefit on education. You know, when we're, when we're all back in schools together, so many teachers are so much more confident to integrate new things into their classroom, use technology a little bit more. And I never think that anybody should use technology just to say they're using it, but there are definitely ways, you know, Bloxel's being a perfect example where you can do things that you can't do without technology and you can create opportunities that you can't without technology, um, sure. where students can be more creative and they can just, they can do things that reach a larger audience or just make them think a little bit harder and, and solve bigger problems. And, you know, teachers are, are great. And there are so many great teachers out there that just weren't confident enough to, you know, take a big jump towards these new things or, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And they were forced to. And I think they quickly, I know so many teachers that quickly realized like, wow, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always knew they could, they just, they just didn't have that one, you know, last ounce of, of confidence. So it wasn't even about the skills or the competency. It was really just the confidence and they've been forced to see that they, they do have it. And yeah. so, you know, I think, I think this is going to have overall a really positive impact on education and, and maybe kids will like school a little bit more now. <laughs> I know my son, uh, you know, we've been doing the, the homeschool, uh, you know, along with the, the school doing, you know, their thing. And um, my son has definitely um, uh, benefited from it. Um, I think he's kind of uh, uh, changed his perspective a little bit on, on learning in school and stuff like that. And um, realizing that uh, we can use these tools for, for the right reasons and we can use these, uh, this technology for the right reasons. Um, speaking of, I mean, it's really great that you... We love that you use Boxels, obviously, you know, coming from us. Um, what, uh, how did you run across it? What was your first experience with it? What made you kind of use that and incorporate it into your programs and your curriculums and stuff? So you'll have to correct me if my history is wrong at all, but I remember finding Bloxels when <clears throat> it was really still a game and a toy before mm -hmm. Bloxels EDU really existed. Yep. And I don't remember how or where I found it, but I ended up having kits in my room. And I, I think maybe three or four at the most. I only had a couple iPads um, in my room for 30 students. And, um, you know, whenever whenever the April, May timeframe hit, that was always my, all right, let me see what I can try. Let me, let me see what I can, what, you know, what works, what doesn't, new tools, just new learning strategies, because, um, you know, it's at the end of the year, kids are more excited, they're, they're harder to rein in a little bit. Um, but they're also, they're, they're well, you know, quote, unquote, trained in my systems, they know who I am, I know who they are. Um, so I would always love to try things. So I remember trying Bloxels. And I can't, I don't even remember the games that I was having the students build. I didn't really know much about it. I, we were all figuring out how to build characters and games together. And at first I remember thinking like, man, this is going to be really cool. I get to play video games <laughs> to grade my kids. And then I was four out of 30 video games in and I thought to myself, oh my God, this is going to take forever. <laughs> and I think it was that summer that Block Souls came out with their EDU version, which yep. was a total game changer. and and why I jumped on board because having the hub to manage the students, just having logins, you know, cause I, I never taught in a one-to-one -one environment. So 
just being able to have students grab any device, whether it's a computer or iPad, having both, and just being able to log in and go was a huge win. Being able to see the story of their games from the hub, you know, just reading the text that they were building in, because that was my main focus was, you know, if I'm going to bring this into reading, to math, to social studies, you know, I told them like, listen, the story blocks are most important because mm -hmm. that's how I prove that we're still, you know, learning and we're still doing the topics that we should be doing. Um, and as I've become more comfortable with it, I realize there's a lot of ways to build that into the game as well, not just the story. Um, so that's kind of how I jumped all in. And once the hub was there, it was a, it was a game changer for me. And, and I just started running with it. And uh, my first, my last year teaching fifth grade was my first like kind of full year of using it throughout. And I was amazed at how many kids loved it. I thought I was going to really grab the attention of the boys and the gamers that typically didn't, you know, get super excited about other projects that we did. Sure. And I did without a doubt, but every kid in my class, boys and girls, um, regardless of their interests, they all loved Bloxels. I even had a girl, very, very intelligent, just an incredible student, and she would read all day if you let her. And anytime Bloxels was a choice or an option, she would run to it. That's awesome. And, and I, think I, I think what made me realize or, or what I think was the reason this, that so many or all of the students loved it is it gives them an opportunity to be super creative. They build from scratch and yeah. they can build whatever they want. You know, it's my job to set up the structures to integrate it into our curriculum. Um, and that's what, that's really what the whole focus of our graduate course is, is, you know, how does this fit? Right. Um, but they just get to be so creative. And I think that's why they love it and they can produce it for a global audience, you know, publishing it to the arcade. That was another huge win. Yeah. Um, you know, cause it didn't live in the, it didn't live in their device anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so I even had parents when they, uh, one project they did, they had to build a game that represented the Boston tea party. And I created a rubric and the parents had to play it and grade them. So that was, that was a really cool experience. The parents loved it. Um, so there, there's just a lot of neat things you can do with it. And I have found, I I've tried, you know, almost everything out there related to STEM, um, and, and there's so many great products and robotics and 3D printing. There's so much incredible stuff you can do right now and you can really integrate it into what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Loxels was the most intimidating, but the easiest to implement once I learned it. Um, and once I just kind of let it go to the students because at the end of the day, they can just create a story and you can connect stories to any subject. And so, you know, it really is applicable to k-12 every subject in the graduate courses i've had kindergarten through senior um, teachers world language phys ed special education science math everything and they all find ways to bring it into their classroom which is really really neat to see that's really awesome yeah it's uh it's it's early on we you know obviously when you create a new product or when you create a new platform you experiment and we experiment with lots of different aspects. Um, there was a moment where we wanted it to be more of a coding platform, but um, we actually found that, um, and I'm glad to hear you say that because we actually found that sometimes the coding aspect of things, um, when you get into that really hardcore coding stuff, uh, you, you end up losing people. Um, and I don't mean the kids, you end up losing the, the educators and you end up losing, right. um, and it's not for lack of, you know, understanding necessarily, it's just that learning curve and you guys got a lot to do. You got a lot of, a lot of stuff to work on. You don't have time to learn an entire, you know, concept and system yourself necessarily. Um, you need to figure out ways to take tools and integrate them into the stuff that you're already, you know, you're already doing and the, uh, the curricula that, you're, that you already have. So with Bloxels, we really wanted to create a system that could be used in any classroom which is why we ended up veering away from coding and focus more on storytelling and uh, you know character development and all the and art honestly and, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, what's interesting about that is that at STEM camp I was doing a session on Bloxels and I had a teacher, secondary teacher who teaches computer programming, uh, high level coding, and I I it was our third day of the event so I knew I knew him um, 
and I, I went to went up to him. I said, "Listen, like." this is video game design, but I said, this isn't, this isn't coding. Like, I don't think this is a good session for you to go to. I said, you should probably find another one. Yeah. And he's like, nah, he's like, you know what? Let me, I, you know, I'm kind of interested. Let me just, let me just wait and see. And, um, so afterwards I, I said, you know, was it, was it beneficial for you? He said, actually it really was because he said, I spend so much time with the students teaching about coding and, and building programs that they forget that if you don't build a story <laughs> into your video games, no one will ever want to play it ever. Yeah. And so he said, this is actually great because I can give them this as well. And they'll just focus on the story and the design and not think about coding at all. That's a really, that's a really good point. I mean, I'm a, uh, I'm a software engineer, so um, I get heads down into the software side of it. And, you know, I forget, you know, that this is, the output of this is for someone to use. You know, it's not just how elegant my code is and how well it works and how fast it is and all that kind of stuff. And that stuff's important, but obviously the storytelling and the design aspect, um, you know, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's, you know, as if not more important, you know, half the time. So um, I'm glad to hear you say that. That's awesome. That's really cool that, uh, that you've had that experience with it. Uh, let's talk about uh, PD a little bit. Um, you know, uh, what you guys are doing with PD Campus and, uh, in, you know, specifically with, um, you know, Bloxels, we can talk about that. You guys kind of came to us with this concept of people are using Bloxels. We love teaching it. You're using it for your graduate courses. You're using it with your students, um, which is all awesome. And you ended up, you know, coming to us and saying like, we would love to kind of help spread the PD, you know, uh, uh, for Bloxels in general. Um, you know, how can we, how can we do that? So we've only recently started to kind of partner up and talk about how we can do that. So, uh, from your perspective, you know, what have, what are you, uh, what are you doing now with PD for, for Bloxels? And, um, and I know you're doing it for, you know, other products as well and, and other aspects of, uh, of teaching. Um, why don't you give me a quick, like uh, high level overview of that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, like I said, you know, our, our main thing for a while was the graduate courses and it, it still is, um, it's, we're expanding to online now. Um, and, and STEM camp has been a, a big part of it too. Our, our annual event that we've held in the summer in Pennsylvania, mostly Pennsylvania teachers. We've had a few from New Jersey, Maryland, and we've had some, we've had actually one from California, one from Texas, North Carolina. So we've had some, some fly in and travel for it. Um, and we want that event to continue to grow. And, and from that, you know, we've made a lot of partnerships with companies that we believe in. So, you know, Bloxels has been a part of the event. Um, we've had, you know, the, some of the, you know, the big hitters, Make, Make Wonder, Sphero, Ozobots, all those, and, um, and some of the value added resellers. And so one in particular is Maker Maven. And they, you know, they sell the products um, to the schools and also provide support. And all those guys. Um, yeah, absolutely. And we've learned how valuable they are. Just you know, when we started, people would ask us, you know, where do you get this stuff? And we would say, well, we bought it from Amazon because mm -hmm. um, they sell everything. And we once we partnered with um, these value added resellers, we realized how that, how important they are, because if things go wrong, they can give you support. Yeah. Um, they have professional development. They 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 can actually you can call them. You can't yeah. you know, you can't call anybody else like that. Um, and Maker Maven is just, you know, Jamie, Matt, husband and wife, they're great. Um, so they asked us about doing professional development in school districts across the country. And so we started to travel for them. We'll go into the school and train them on a particular product. And, and with anything, our main thing is, is integration. So if I'm going to teach them how to use a particular tool, I'm not going to say, this is how it works. I'm going to show them how it works while modeling a simple integration. So if they're learning to code a robot, I'm gonna, they're gonna learn to code a robot while participating in an elementary math center. So they're seeing, they're seeing how it works and right away they can see, oh wow, like, you know, I don't even teach math, but I could do it this way and it would work for my kids. And so, you know, we wanted to do the same with you guys at Bloxels and, and so we kind of had the same partnership where we hope to be able to get out and travel to schools yeah. that are integrated, integrating Bloxels. Um, so, you know, we are available to travel right to the school district. Um, if, if they set it up through you guys, we, de we design a full day or multiple days of customized PD where we talk to the, the leader, the administrator, you know, what are their goals? What teachers are we working with? 
um, you know, talk about devices and we design a full day of instruction. Um, and, you know, we'll show them how the products work, but I get, again, more importantly, this is how you can integrate it into your classroom. And we challenge the teachers to say, I'm modeling one way, now make it work for you. Right. And, you know, forcing them to think about, you know, they might say, I'll take that exactly the way you just designed it and I'll use it myself, or they might have to tweak it and modify it. Sure. And so we're also doing some virtual PD with you guys as well. Um, kind of the same thing where, you know, it's more about how to get started with your first lesson or, you know, what are the ways that you can initially jumpstart your students into designing. Um, you know, through my experience, I have some, some, I think, really important tips on what you show them first, what you show them second, and kind of how you slowly release it to them, while at the same time, opening it up so that you're not hindering their creativity. Yeah. Um, and so those are really the goals of the virtual PD, not necessarily how to build a game or how to build a character, because your tutorials are great. And that covers, you know, the how to, but it's really, you know, how to in the classroom is really the, the purpose of our PD. Yeah, it's it's really great to work with you guys and be you know, we've been in this for a little bit. Like you said, it wasn't uh Bloxels it, the first iteration of Bloxels was not meant for EDU in any way. Um we just had so much interest from educators and educators using it and kind of like crowbarring it into their, you know, into their curriculum. So I mean that was the the catalyst for Box the EDU. So really our our experience in the EDU space is maybe two, three years old, eh, three years old. Um and, and from a from a company's perspective, it's really only two years old. There's just a handful of folks within the company that were kind of uh going gorilla with the edu market um you know shout out to uh, amber and josh you know they were uh, they were the ones just kind of tackling the edu market while we were you know we were as a company working on the star wars product um and uh so the edu market uh, is is still fairly new for us and we can teach our product we can teach we know generally based on what we're hearing from educators and what we're hearing from students and stuff but at the end of the day it's not the same you know as coming from someone like you um, who's in it day in and day out, you have a completely different perspective on it. Um, honestly, you could probably teach Bloxels better than, you know, I could at this point. So it's, you know, it's really cool to see, uh, to have this kind of partnership with you guys where, you know, we can have a professional development offering, but in all reality, it's, it's really, it's coming from you guys. So, um, and, uh, that's folks who are actually using the product and, uh, in the same way that the people learning about it, uh, will be. So the teacher to teacher relationship is, is so important. And, you know, when I traveled for Maker Maven last summer, I was talking to the team that I was going to meet with. And, you know, I said, yeah, you know, right now I'm using, I forget what the product was, but I'm using this in my, in my class right now for this activity. And they're like, wait, you're a teacher? <laughs> and I said, yeah, like we're actual, you know, classroom teachers or, you know, some of our guys, some of our guys and girls are technology coaches, but, you know, we're all in, yeah. in education currently public education right now in some capacity um, and we kind of just do this on the side for you know really for fun and just to um you know try to impact a greater audience and you know it's it's i had a teacher at stem camp this past summer say did you ever think about how many kids you guys have affected and i, and I, I said what do you mean she said think about how many teachers have come to your event and then how many students they teach and yeah. are, you know, bringing this to their classroom. And that's, you know, as an educator, like that's all we care about is oh, how yeah. can we impact more kids? And so to be able to do it to a larger audience or audiences in different states is a, is a really fun experience. So if, you know, talking tactically, if people are, you know, are watching and, and, and uh, they're interested in kind of what we're talking about, if someone, you know, uh, okay, we live in a certain kind of world at the moment, um, you know, going to schools, uh, well, first of all, it's summer almost, but, um, you know, going to schools might not be a thing right away uh, to some extent, but uh, if someone wanted to book uh, an online PD session with you, you know, how would they, how would they go about that? Um, um, I know we have that on uh, our site. Um, what are the, what are the general approaches that you're taking? You know, I know you've kind of tiered you know, how, uh, how you, how you want to, uh, approach PD in general. So, um, it's, a it's like a shorter session, like a longer session, and then like an in-person, can you talk about those for a second? Absolutely. So, um, right now we have, um, a one hour or two hour session. Like you said, it's right on their, on your site. 
Um, you guys did a great job creating that so they can just essentially purchase that time on their site. Um, so you're, you're purchasing a, you're, you're purchasing a block for that hour or two hours. And so you can invite up to up to five people to attend with you. Um, we like to keep it small because if there's, if there's questions, which we encourage, you know, we do Q and A, if, if a people ask a question, right. that's going to kill 20 to 30 minutes of the hour. Right. Um, so we like to keep it small. So, you know, if you're interested and you have a few teachers on your team or, you know, a few people using it, you can buy that hour and then they all kind of just chip in and, and join in. Um, or, you know, the same for an administrator buying it for a team. Um, and so, you know, that, that one hour is really, you know, how and where do you get started with Bloxels, um, not how to build games. Um, like I said, those are covered through the tutorials. I can answer questions and I might show like, hey, you might get, you might get hung up here, or kids might get snagged here, um, but it's really about, you know, what can your first lesson look like? How do you roll this out to your students? Um, how do you create games to engage your students? And then also how do your students create games to incorporate into activities and projects? And the, the two hour session is, is really this relatively the same concepts, but it's a little bit of a deeper dive, um, you know, looking more into um, how to design, you know, both long term, long term and short term activities for your students um, and really just going more in depth. So it's it's really just a matter of what you're looking for. Sure. Um, like you said, right now, face to face really isn't a possibility. But for school districts that are implementing this with with larger amounts of teachers, um, you know, bringing us to the school district would, I think, have a much bigger impact. We can work with a larger group. You can accomplish a lot more when you're face to face versus uh, virtual. Um, but, you know, who knows if, if things don't go back for a while, maybe we'll offer full day virtual PD. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's it's definitely a possibility where you can run some things through meetings and then teachers can have work time and, and office hours and and, you know, all things are always a possibility. Um, so it's really just, you know, it, we're we're here to step in once once the teachers have spent, you know, 20 to 30 minutes just looking at the tutorials and understanding the basics of building the blocks, building a game, um, you know, designing a character, you know, we can really talk about, you know, how does this fit and where does this fit? Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Um, I mean, eventually, you know, I, I we're all kind of learning right now about this uh, distance learning and learning how to communicate better through zoom and through facetime and you know google meet and things like that um, i think honestly if anything this is going to help people understand the etiquette um, from that perspective and maybe even up their game a little bit you know like uh you know uh there's so many i don't know if you've seen it there's so many new products and tutorials on like lighting for zoom interviews and stuff like that so um you know it's uh it's kind of nuts but uh, i think that um you know, a lot can be accomplished uh, through online virtual training sessions. And, um, you know, the idea of a full day, you know, uh, session, depending on how the world works out over the next, you know, three or four months uh, is definitely interesting. And I'd, I'd be really interested to see how we approach that. But uh, that's really cool. What do you uh, do? You have any plans for the summer in general? Uh, you know, usually it's uh, STEM camp when, when that's usually in June, right? Uh, July, July. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so as a as a teacher, my summer plans are always um, unplug and recharge sure. um, for you know the first half of summer. And then I usually try to find a, book, a good book related to education. Um, and I would always take the time to reflect on what do I wanna do different? Mm -hmm. um, and, and what do I wanna change? And, and for a while it was always finding new stuff to bring in. Um, and then after a while it was kind of thinking back and saying, you know, I brought all this stuff in, what did I take out that I shouldn't have taken out? Um, and, you know, always trying to reflect on just how to do things a little bit different, a little bit better. Um, the one year I was reading a book that it triggered a thought, um, I had my students design my classroom. And so they actually walked into all the desks and chairs in a big pile. <laughs> and we set up the classroom for the first week. Um, so, you know, just, just coming up with things like that, um, from a, for the PD campus side, um, our main focus right now is, is getting all of our courses online, which, which I um, help facilitate with all of our instructors. Uh, we have six classes available right now um, 
four online. So, you know, even if you're not in Pennsylvania, these are, these are now available to you. Um, our website is pdcampus.org. Um, so, you know, just, just uh, supporting all of our instructors or the classes I'm running myself to uh, be 100% online. And um, we're developing more courses um, to move forward with the fall and, you know, hoping to get back to running our face-to-face -face classes as well as online. Um, you know, the online classes are great and we do as much as we can to build in collaboration through those online platforms, but there's nothing as good as just sitting down with a group of teachers and just talking about, yeah. talking about something and just, you know, hashing out like, you know, what if this happens? How, what are your management strategies? Um, but that's, that's a big thing right now for, for us at PD campus is, is content development and, and moving more and more online. That's awesome. Yeah. It's uh it's really cool to have seen your guys, you know, progression over the last few years and, and where you're going with it. Um, we'll obviously link all of the, uh, you know, pertinent links and stuff like that in the description, um, for the, uh, for the video. Um, you know, we'll be sharing this with some folks because I think it's a really cool opportunity for educators to, uh, you know, take advantage of talking to someone who really knows what they're talking about when it comes to, uh, you know, Bloxels and, uh, and integrating it in the classroom. So um, I really I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and, and chat with me about, uh, you know, what you're doing and then what we're doing and, uh, and the yeah. state of the world. Yeah, thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Awesome. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Sounds good. See ya. That was our conversation with Ken Ehrman. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you want to know more about PD Campus and the various offerings that they have and the various offerings that we are doing in tandem with them, go down in the description. We'll have some links and some information there. If you like this video, please give it a like. It helps us and gives us more momentum to keep doing this. If you have not, please subscribe and leave a comment. We'd really appreciate to hear what it is you thought about it, uh, questions, concerns, anything like that. As always, we appreciate it and we will see you in the next video.